Welcome, everybody, to Unpopular Opinions, a Star Wars podcast. Uh, as the title suggests, we will be sharing unpopular opinions that we have revolving around the Star Wars universe. So, before we get started, let's uh, all introduce us and all introduce ourselves. I'm Victory Gaming. Uh, what's up, guys? It's uh, Joe Science, founder and creator of a Facebook group by the name of Star Wars Loyalist. And I'm JB Garza. I run RGB Custom Sabers. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram and on YouTube. Alright, so um, now that we got that all out of the way, so uh, who wants to be the, uh, the first to kind of share uh, their uh, unpopular opinion? Uh, I, I, I'll go first. I know the, well, the, the one unpopular opinion that I'm seeing a lot right now, I guess because everyone's already theorizing for episode 9, is... Uh, is is Raylo gonna happen? And I I'm one of the few that I pray it does because I'm I love the whole Raylo concept and right. Ray and Kylo becoming a, a thing, whether it's uh, romantically or or either siblings or related somehow. I just hope that they're connected in right. one way or another. Right. So I mean, that's, I would, uh, that's that's one. I, I actually have to agree. I would actually really like to see that. Um, so I mean, yeah, I think it would be really interesting. I mean, uh, I I do have I, I do have a feeling that you know just to please the the people um, and the way things are now, it's you know everything's romanticized and everything. Right. I have a feeling that they are gonna go with the whole romantic uh, connection, but um, then again, that's also expected. And with Star Wars, you never know, man. They they're known for throwing plot twists in there that'll completely yeah. blow your mind. So. Yeah, and there's um, a lot of times where plots have kind of taken like a complete 180. So exactly, yeah. So <laughs> I would say that that that's that's one of mine. I don't have several, but that's right, probably right. my main. Yeah. So basically, mm -hmm. uh, on that Raylo concept, I think that I would want to see that too because uh, basically when Snoke put them in that you know that connection, gave them that connection. Uh, you can kind of see at the end of The Last Jedi when Rey is entering yeah. the Millennium Falcon and Kylo is holding the dice. He looks up and Rey looks down and at that point it gives you the illusion or the reality that they're both looking at each other again. So right. the connection is still there even when Snoke is dead. Supposedly, right. I don't know if Snoke really is dead, that's another opinion. Uh, but I mean, I think he's dead. But yeah, that's my look on that. Real little. You know what? I, I'm actually kind of thinking about you know that is I feel like because I kind of agree that Snoke is dead. I think if you if anybody remember, I mean everybody surely everybody you know watching the Star Wars fans, but uh, if you remember that you kind of had the Force ghosts and stuff, and I kind of feel like maybe Snoke isn't you know communicating all this sort of as a Force ghost to you know Kylo and all that kind of stuff. I mean. Uh, but uh, see, I was the one opinion I was going to share is, uh, which I'm not sure this is necessarily an, an unpopular opinion, but uh, so many people kind of saw Darth Vader as evil, or not necessarily evil, but kind of as uh, you know entirely dark side. I didn't. I, I feel like I, I kind of don't really. I see him as somebody who was dealt a really really bad hand in life and uh i feel like just about just like with just about anybody really i feel like he kind of because everybody has the limit you know that they can take a limit to what you know that they, to what they can take and i feel like his was crossed so i don't really feel like he's inherently you know i guess you could say evil i hate using that because it's, it's kind of black and white but I feel like he's really more or less just somebody that is just really pissed off over their, the hand that he was dealt, and uh, <laughs> you know. I I think I think he was I think he was really just consumed. I think I like to think that the whole dark side and light side is like an actual thing right. that uh, controls people here, and I think he was just consumed with so much hate that the dark side just completely took over and. He went yeah. into like he he went into like auto auto drive and he just let the dark side do everything. And I think it was it wasn't until uh, Return of the Jedi that at the end when uh, Palpatine was killing uh, Luke 
that that's when he kind of like snapped back into it and was like, well, you know, it's my turn to take control of this again and uh, do do what's right, right, to bring balance or whatever. That's why he he turned against Palpatine. But uh, yeah, I think he was just an auto play, and um, and the 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 same thing goes with uh, with Luke, and and uh, that's another thing that's. The, 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 I want to say the biggest thing that separates a lot of fans is um, what happened with Luke in The Last Jedi. Right. And uh, I think it has a deeper understanding than a lot of people get. I think people don't like it because they don't understand it. And, uh, and that's what I feel because, and I mind you, I've seen this a couple of times. And the times that I, the first time that I realized what exactly what was happening is that this guy went into such a depression and uh he was he had an internal battle between going to the dark side and staying on the light side that he just decided to seclude himself in case he did go to the dark side he was on an island by himself without ever being able to be you know what i mean well i also feel like too as um, far as uh you know vader kind of turning on palpatine i also know that i mean uh i also kind of feel like you know he, he uh skywalkers i mean he was he was not an idiot you know he knew I think he eventually figured out that, you know, Palpatine was manipulating him, but yeah. at that point, I mean, he was so far, you know, he was so far deep into it, I mean, what, you know, what really was left, like, what kind of options was really available to him anymore at that point, you know. Uh, kind of the same way that, that Kylo turned on Snow, yeah. in a sense, if you think about it. Yeah. I mean, he just kind of got he kind of got fed up of being controlled and said, "Yeah, fuck that, time to make my own thing." You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, going back to yeah. like Anakin, you know, being consumed by the dark side. Um, I mean, at that point in his life, um, he was he was really consumed with love, and that's why he turned to the dark side because of his love for Padme. And yeah. I mean, when he had his visions of her dying. The first thing he thought of was how can I save her? So at mm -hmm. that point, he was willing to do anything to save her. But he also had a conscience. I mean, he was a good person. He he had his moments where he was, you know, filled with rage, and his person that was just his personality. But in Star Wars, it's it's either black or white. And I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know now they're adding a little bit of like the grayish kind of thing, like in like right. Rebels and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, it's it's black and white. Like you're either good or bad. You can't be in between. Uh, I mean, with us, you know, in, in real life, in our universe, I mean, right. we have our ups and downs. We go through our our depression and stuff, but we can get out of it. In Star Wars, it's a little harder because you have the living force that basically controls everything. So there's always a balance in Star Wars, and uh, you know, two very strong light side, or well, light. They were gonna be light side. Uh, Luke and Leia were born, and those two Sith. So. And see, I feel like that's the balance. thing too with like between Jedi and Sith is, I feel like they both kind of. I don't know. I don't know about necessarily say that they both have their own. They're the same goals, but they do have. They both just have different uh, visions or different uh, views on how the Force should be used, basically. Like, oh, yeah, the sense. Sith basically yeah. kind of feel like it should be used, uh, you know, to, to you know, they basically feel like it should be used as a, as a weapon instead of a tool, and they feel like it should be used as a way to make them superior to everyone else, as to where the Jedi kind of feel like it should be used as more so a, just kind of a tool and a way to help people and everything like that, so, I mean... It's, it's interesting because, I mean, a lot of people think, you know, you always hear a lot of people say that, you know, in the games and the universe, a lot of people always say that the Jedi and the Sith are no different. I mean, they, they are different, but they also have their similarities as well, so. Um, yeah, that's what Luke was saying in The Last Jedi, is that the Force doesn't belong to the Jedi or the Sith. It belongs to everyone. And that's everyone, why, yeah. you know, that's why Rey, who is basically a nobody, was able to use the Force because the Force chooses who it goes to, not the Jedi or the Sith. All right, so uh, we're gonna so to go ahead and uh, finalize this uh, this video here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and ask a uh, I got a couple questions here um, for JB actually, um, and these are in regards to uh, custom sabers, RGB custom sabers. 
Um, so the first question I have is in regards to uh, like how long have you like how long you've been making custom sabers? Like how much experience do you have? Things like that. Oh well, it started basically. Uh, I was 18, so I'm gonna be 26. So uh, around eight years ago, I started messing with soldering. So I started uh, modifying Xbox 360 controllers and stuff like that. So I kind of had that experience of soldering. So I basically knew how to solder small SMD LEDs, which are very, very small. Um, so I had uh -huh. that experience. So uh, about almost three years ago, the, the end of 2015, that's when all the hype for The Force Awakens was, I looked into buying, you know, just the cheapy toys, lightsabers. Right. So I bought one. Um, I think it was like a $40 one. Uh, and I was real excited with it. And I kind of looked into, you know, making, buying a custom one. And then I saw how much they were. I was like, oh man, this is expensive. I'm never going to be able to buy one. Um, so what happened was I joined uh, lightsaber groups on Facebook. And somebody posted up a deal where you buy the, the Kylo helmet and his saber for like 200 bucks. I was like, what? So I jumped on it, and I ended up getting scammed. And really? that's basically how I was introduced to the custom lightsaber community, because I got scammed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but people people saw that I got scammed. I had a good friend of mine, uh, Jonathan Hoffman. He, he saw that I got scammed, and he sent me a free lightsaber, like a custom one. And it was empty, of course. Uh, so I sent it off to somebody that does what I do now, and they installed it for me with the electronics so I had a really cool saber uh, but in the time that he was installing it for me I learned on my own how to do it so it all started like the end of 2015 beginning of 2016 so my experience goes all the way back to there right so it's an interesting way or an interesting inspiration to uh to start doing it, it's like, well, how did you get started? It's like, well, I got scammed one time, so I decided, like, <laughs> I tried to order one, so, and I got scammed on it, so I decided to maybe start making my own. <laughs> yeah. You'll um, never get scammed again when you do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, second question is, uh, and I know this is really reliant on, uh, you know, different factors, but uh, kind of like, what are the sort of price ranges you have, you know, on, on, on orders and things like that, approximately? And uh, also, is there, like, any sort of uh, extent to, uh, to what you do on custom orders? Uh, yeah, actually, um, the prices range anywhere, because you can go like a stunt saber. A stunt saber is a lightsaber without sound, so it'll just have like a, a so rechargeable battery. The, it's like a prop or something, basically. Yeah, so you can use these like in movies and stuff like that, or, or for dueling, uh, anything like that. Um, and those ones would be like around 125 to 150. Um, and then you have your higher tier, which have sound. The cheapest ones you can get for sound uh, from me would be like around, uh, I want to say like 300 to 450. And this would be like either the hilt by itself or with the blade and charger and stuff like that. Um, and there's also a lot of, like more stuff you can do. Like you can get advanced electronics that have different auxiliary options like blaster block, blade block, um, force effects, uh, color change, RGB, so you can change. You can have the full spectrum of colors you can get. Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot of options. And some more customization that we do is we can do powder coating, we can do acid etching, and we can also do leather work, do weathering as well. And, uh, Accent LEDs around the hilt, Reblies. Reblies are like little screws and stuff that you put on to make it look more antique, more unique, and stuff like that. And all these sabers have an internal chassis, so it protects the electronics when you're dueling. So you can fight pretty hard with these things because the blades are all removable. They're polycarbonate with uh, cellophane diffusion. Um, and, you know, to take out the blade and, and put the put the blade back in it's just held in by a little 832 retention screw so I mean that's basically all it is so I mean uh, so basically I mean there's 
really just about no limit to really about you know what what you do i mean you pretty much do it all really i mean so um yeah so that is uh rgv uh custom savers if you guys want to check that out like i said i will have a link to uh the uh all the pages and uh all that that's kind of mentioned in the video uh here i'll have those in a comment on the video in the description and i'll also have a few uh annotation links in the video itself so uh I think other than that, I think there's uh, pretty, pretty much covered everything. So uh, I've got, I hope everybody enjoyed. If so, be sure to leave a like, uh, let, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys' uh, unpopular opinions are. And uh, be sure to check out uh, RGV Custom Sabers. Uh, you know, he, he does a lot of stuff. And uh, I myself will definitely be uh, possibly looking into getting uh, something of my own from him. So uh, definitely be sure to check that out. And uh, thanks for watching.